Uh, greetings to a Triceratops in a angel demon game. I'm not sure what's going on, but how demon has a seriously? They even made a penis in the model. I mean, <laughs> it's a ridiculous amount of detail. Okay. Um, Doggelinda Stranglehold. Hail, Commander. Doggelinda Stranglehold casually salutes you with her maimed hand. What's your role in my army? I am the chief quartermaster in charge of material support. I make sure our brave soldiers are armored, armed and fed when they go into battle. Or at least two out of three are. You know how it goes. And Linda chuckles. <laughs> I'm also the head of the logistics council. If we're missing something, I'll report it to you right away. What does the logistics council do? I'd supplies, what else? As you lead your troops in those legendary battles, we solve various non-heroic issues like what our fighters are going to eat tomorrow, how to fix a chainmail shortage, and how to get our hands on a shipment of helmets we purchased that stuck somewhere in Ustalaf. Those are the headaches we deal with. Sometimes, however, we are faced with something we can't just hash out without you. That's when we have to assemble the council and ask for your decision. But Torak willing, that won't happen too often. We've got your supplies covered, so you go ahead and be heroic to your heart's content. What became of the quartermaster was taking care of the supplies during the March on Dresden? Nothing, really. He got a medal for his heroism during the resort on Dresden, and now he's right back where he was, keeping up the good work. It's just that a fortress like Dresden is a little out of his league. When you need to supply the camp during a march, he's your man, but it takes a different set of skills to be a chief quartermaster. Ah, uh, what's with that nickname? Stranglehold? Our... Don't do that. Don't ask women about their names. Especially if they are odd. Wait for them to make it a topic of discussion, that's just rude. Our resident jokesters came up with it when my hand went numb from the wound. She holds up her crooked fingers with it to the bone. After that I left the front line for the supply service. And then I showed every wise cracker that one hand is all you need to keep your supplies in order. My grip really is a stranglehold, you see. All those thieving quartermasters who go out of their way to sell some ammunition on the sly, scatterbrained officers who lose half a caravan in every skirmish, civilian milk ops who have always have a sob story to explain why they can't give you anything to the army. They can't. Uh, they all learned well why people call old Dorgelinda stranglehold. Uh, we have spells available that could restore your hand. Spend it on some poor sap whose legs got ripped off in the first battle. Thank you for your concern, Commander, but while we are at war, resources should be sent where they are needed. I'm handling the logistics just fine with one hand. Well, that is very noble. That is extremely noble. I'm pretty sure that most wouldn't make that decision. They would be very delighted and immediately argue, I could work even better. I'm in a high position. I need to be ready to blah, blah, blah. Not Doggelinda Stranglehold. <laughs> okay, I have to go. Thank you. Mm, blacksmith. Let's see if they have anything else to offer. Uh, maybe new gear? Okay, yeah, it doesn't look like that. Mm, Will shirt arms. Show me what you have. Anything new? Okay, so apparently nothing new. Tower shield. Yeah, we got all that already. Stuff I don't care about. Exotic weapons provider, blah. Alrighty. I'm wondering, can we? Oh, oh Bismuth. Wait, are you telling me that he is now our full time companion or something like that? I mean, we need to summon him, yes, but. Don't we have equipment for him? Yes, we do. Oh no. Can't be equipped by this character. I mean, it's only temporary, not permanent but it's very good to see that we have an actual pets have levels pets have equipment that's oh my goodness very interesting God this game is so much replay value mm, peasant blah 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 uh, cane weaver jewelry doesn't matter let's talk to drain and camellia for now we're going to spend this episode talking You know what? Dren asks, not bothering to greet you properly. 
I've noticed a certain cyclical pattern in my life ever since I met you. First, something happens that leaves me positively intrigued, then I descend into the depth of fear and anger, and then I start to think that it's not so bad. The curiosity comes back, and then something even more dreadful occurs. The demons attacking my home and the city around it. It was unpleasant enough already, but I thought I could compensate for that by striking up a curious acquaintance and having some new experiences. Then my dearest cousin threw me right into the middle of a crusade. And just when I started to see some positives in my current situations, the gargoyles kidnapped me. Slaughter and Dresden, following my triumphant rescue, effectively put out every spark of optimism that I had managed to gather. Now the city is in our hands again, and it's getting more and more tolerable to stay here. I feel surprisingly good, and I'm even beginning to find the city rather enjoyable. This brings one very reasonable question to my mind. What is the next outrageous and dangerous mess you're going to pull me into? <laughs> um, I have a couple more perilous trials and insurmountable challenges in the store for you. Thus, this list include the ordeal known as the Trial of the Cold Oatmeal. If not, then there's nothing to be afraid of. And if you think I've shown you my weak spot, then you're wrong. It was deliberate misinformation. You want to talk about your past? I don't like discussing such unpleasant things. You seem to be quite capable of having fun, so why are you... I don't even know what you're trying to achieve here. I suppose you can always ask and I'll decide whether I want to answer or not. Tell me honestly, do you miss the people who died that day? I regret leaving my mother alone. She deserved a better death than that. They confined her to a room so that she wouldn't infect those who still believed they could avoid the illness and... Oh, I forgot that you didn't know. Alright, that's enough. Let me be blunt. I don't care about my so-called kin at all. People die every day and none of those people were my friends. They are all dead and I am alive and able to enjoy life to the fullest. But besides, there are many things far worse than death. Well, if you're d living in a demon-possessed world and your soul can be corrupted, that's probably true. Were you even ever close to your mother? Perhaps, maybe. My mother loved me and I loved her even though I was a thorn in her side. How can you truly be close to your parents when you're just an arrogant whelp? At least I was lucky enough to have a real mother instead of a countess mother. Aristocratic parents often see their children as valuable investments and vessels for all their ambitions. Um... Well, goodbye. So nothing new here. Let's see what... Camellia... Let us press on. Wait, where is she? Noble... No Again, she's nowhere to be seen. But she should be here, according to the map. Why is she? Isn't isn't Camellia the one? Um, in the citadel. Whoa! Did Triceratops seriously just invade this home? <laughs> Sometimes this game is just ridiculous. We have a Triceratops. It's just what? How and why? <laughs> Okay, just randomly a dinosaur. Okay. <laughs> oh, this game. <laughs> okay, we're starting west. How we're going to work our way to the east. To the dark realms of the ones that are not west. <laughs> what? Um, Arushale Arsino. Okay. Well, let's talk to her. Arushale's ruby eyes stare watchfully at passers by who don't notice her even at arm's length. She turns to you, her face a mixture of contemplation, sadness, and admiration. They're amazing, aren't they? Um, we are being attacked by demons with unusual powers. Do you know anything about them? Arushale thinks for a long time. Finally, she answers hesitantly. Back in Alushinira, there were rumors about terrible experiments that Baphomet and Ascari performed on their troops to make them stronger. Here on the material plane, these rumors were embellished with a lot of de with lots of details. 
Some say the demons undergo rituals acquired from Zon Cuthon. Others say they fair feed on the blood of angels or quillops or demon lords. Still others say that they are no experiments and Baphomet is just bringing back fighters from the future. The future in which the demons have already taken all of Colarion. Is there a grain of truth in any of these ramblings? Well, there's no way to know. Naturally, none of these rumors give any indication of where these demons come from. I'm sorry I can't help. The only thing that's clear is that lowly fighters in the army of the Abyss are as puzzled by this as we are. What are you doing here? I'm watching. She nods at the city dwellers as they hurry past. I'm listening to their conversations, studying their faces. I'm trying to understand what they truly are. Don't you think you are being a little creepy? What? So keep his blink surprised. Really? Why? I don't mean any harm. Well, staring is considered rude. Mm, why do you like to watch people? You know, when I... In my old life, I thought I knew everything about them. I was a master of seduction, after all. I knew how to tempt a mortal into doing anything I required. I could trap them in a lie, or lie myself, and never get caught. It's disgusting to remember, but that was my life for many centuries. Now I see I knew nothing. The demon warrior probably also considers himself an expert on mortals because he's killed so many of them. He certainly knows where to thrust the spear for quick death, and where to thrust it, thrust it for a long and painful one. And he thinks that's enough. My knowledge, it was of the same kind. I ruined many mortals without learning the first thing about them. Now I watch them to understand them. This won't give my victims back their lives, of course, but still, by growing closer to these mortals, it's like I'm paying back some part of my debt to my victims' memories. Have you learned anything new about mortals, then? Ah, they love cats. Arushale speaks in a very serious manner as if sharing an important scientific discovery with you, but then a moment later, she smiles to give the joke away. Seriously, have your observations of humans led to anything? I wouldn't want to draw any rash conclusions. I've only been watching them for a short while, but I think I have understood one thing. The succubi have a saying, mortals always lie. If a mortal isn't talking, it means she's busy lying to herself. Oh, that's a deep one. But now I see this isn't true. You mortals aren't liars, you're dreamers. Each of you creates a huge daydream for yourself and everyone you share your life with. It isn't exactly a lie because the daydream is your truth. There is a very interesting topic um, that this tries to deal with. There's a book and there's um, a movie where the Hawkfather disappears. The movie's called The Hawkfather. Uh, based on the story of Terry Pratchett, where Death ultimately asks a question, and he asks, well, what is life and the universe and truth and lies? Um, I believe he said in words, take the universe and grind it down into the finest, finest powders and sieve it through the finest sieve and then show me one atom of justice, one molecule of mercy. Yet you try to act as if there is some ideal order in the world, as if there is some righteous, the universe by which it may be judged. And then the human said, I believe if she said that. Well, it wasn't really a human, it was the granddaughter of death. But people got to believe that, or else what's the point? And death answered to that one. They need to believe in lies. How else should they become? No. There was something with the truth and lies. I don't remember the exact words. What Death was saying is that in order for a truth to become truth, we start. We first have to start believing a lie. And then that lie be can become a truth. What is justice but a lie? Justice is the lie that we can make rules that will work and people will follow them. And without anyone believing into the, in these ideals, they are just that, lies. But we can make them truth. Through our common belief, through our common work, a lie will, will eventually become truth. Love and all of that. That's a quite interesting philosophical topic. Mm. And dreaming, daydreaming. 
principle, as I said. They all begin as a lie. And then eventually, because that lie is shared and people believe in it, it becomes the truth. Um... I see. Please tell me about yourself. I'm afraid you won't like what I'm going to tell you. Where does Succubi come from? Did you have a childhood? No. Well, well, yes, but in brief, the Abyss is nothing like the mortal world. Arushale makes a gesture in the air, trying to find the right words. You remember life since conception. No, no, wait, you don't remember that part, do you? But certainly you know everything since birth. We do not. Normally when a human dies, the Lady of Graves decides which plane they go to. Most often, those who arrive in the Abyss turn into larvae. You know the little worms no one notices until you step on them. They crawl in the mud for centuries, devour each other, and the strongest ones turn into demons. Ugh. I don't know how the transformation happens. Maybe we hatch out of them like caterpillars out of butterflies. No, wait, it's the other way around. Uh, or maybe greater demons sculpt out us out of them. Like so much clay? I don't know what happened to the larvae they used to make me. On my own memory, it begins with vague, fragmentary images. Terror, executions, orgies. I remember some poor lad, half gnawed by the larvae. He was crying and begging to be killed, and I pointed at him and laughed and said I wouldn't. Desna, forgive me, I'm so ashamed. How did you end up turning against the abyss? Temptation. Arushale smiles sadly. Strange, isn't it? So many people believe that being good is important, but it's boring and unpleasant, and all that's enjoyable and tempting pertains to evil. Even the servants of kind gods often think so, do they not? You have no idea how easy that makes the role of a temptress. Well, it was my great fortune to discover that it's not always like that. My last... Arushale looks away. My last victim was a priestess of Desna. The tender of dreams. As you know, demons do not sleep. Mortals always compare the greatest moments to dreams, so I decided it would be interesting to see for myself, and while I was at it, forgive me, goddess, to mock Desna. This priestess lay in my arms, dying of my kiss. I, I remember every smallest detail, the cold sweat on her skin, her eyes rolled back into her hand, her weak whisper. It's so difficult to recount. Well... I dove into her mind to see what mortal dreams were like, but the goddess saw me in her realm, and it turned out I remained there far longer than I planned. What did Desna do to you? As a punishment, she gave me mercy. I often think, why me? She could easily have blown me away like smoke with a flick of her finger. The gods rarely trouble themselves with the life of mortals, and even less so with demons, but for reasons of her own, she paid me special attention. She awoke in me the memories of the sinners whose souls were used to create me. All those humans. I knew nothing of them until Desna showed me. Each of them had their own dreams, and a world without pity trampled each of them, and placed them on a path that led to the abyss. Their memories of all their hopes and pain. I'm sorry, it's hard for me to talk about this. You see tears of well up in the succubus' eyes. Arushile wipes away her tears and continues. The most important de thing I realized was that every mortal is a little world of hopes and dreams, and that although I, I might be a succubus, I, I didn't have to live forever with those beastly, boring pleasures and torturers of the abyss. I can be free, I, I can be myself. If only I can understand who I am. You don't know who you are? What of you? Do you know who you are? Are there many mortals who can make that claim? Before returning me to the mortal realm, Desna whispered something to me. I can still hear her words. She asked me, And what do you dream of? And I... I don't know. I still don't. You see, demons are simple creatures. Arushale pursues, purses her lips. Each is guided by three, th two or three strong sins before my conversion. My sins were all I was, a ball of desire without anyone behind them doing the desiring. Desires for sex, for flattery and food. But now I have me. And, and <laughs> it's amazing, but it is so complicated. Arushale makes an apologetic gesture and smiles. What did you do after Desna converted you? 
I traveled. In the beginning, I thought it wise to keep away from demons and their temptations. Run off to Absalom, or perhaps even further, to another plane, but then I realized that I didn't deserve freedom yet. The abyss was still in me. It called to me, tempting me, seducing me. If I ran away, I would soon return to my old habits. Uh, Urushale forces the word from her mouth. That is why I came here, to join the war. To remember who my enemy is. To defeat the demons. Not for just for the mortal world, but for myself as well. Because if I don't kill my past, it will always be reaching for me. I'm a wonderful liar. I'm no longer proud of it, but it's still true. The demons never suspected my treason until the very end. I lived as a spy, and regularly reported back to the priests of Desna where whatever I learned. Naturally, I concealed my identity from them as well. I would never have been caught. But when I learned that Iskari was planning an attack on Kenabris, well, there was no time for caution. I risked everything to warn you, and paid with my freedom. Thank you for not running from evil, but confronting it. Yes. I'm glad I did. We need to do more lawful. I don't want to lose our paladin being again. But, you know, it's hard. Evil calls me back every day, and when it's so close. What if one day I grow tired of fighting? Then you will come to me, and your friends will help you. So do you worship Desna now? The goddess did a lot for me, more than I ever deserved. Asking anything more of her would be impudent. Or impudent. I'm grateful to her, but I try not to trouble her with my prayers. Thank you. I hope my answers didn't upset you too much, at least not as much as they upset me. May I ask you a personal question? The kind of question a mortal might ask a succubus? You want to talk about sex? <laughs> Rushley looks you in the eye. Ask me anything. I'll not keep secrets from you. But don't expect to hear anything light-hearted or pleasant. The kiss of a succubus is deadly, isn't it? Not just the kiss. Any caress of any kind sucks the life from mortals, and there's nothing I can do about it. Arushale touches her lips ever so slightly. For mortals, tenderness is tenderness, and violence is violence, but I don't know what it's like to kiss and not inflict pain. I just hope my observation of mortals will help me understand. Young lovers, old spouses, even what mortals condemn as promiscuity. To me it all looks like something amazingly human. You know a drop of vital energy is a small price to pay for your kiss. <laughs> Don't joke like that. For me it's not a joke at all. I'm not kidding. I'm sorry. Uh, it wasn't meant to upset you. Never mind, just try not to tempt me. You know it's hard for me to control myself. Wait, you mean you just don't just watch people during the day out in the street? Well, I never touch anyone. Never harm anyone. I just watch and listen. Is that bad? You must respect others' privacy. Please restrict yourself to observing people in public. If you say so. I'm sorry if I did something wrong. I haven't quite figured out how mortal life works. What is sex between demons like? Everything demons do is a sort of cannibalism. Each devours mortals and the other demons in their own way. Some enjoy literally tearing pieces of flesh with their teeth. Others like to subdue and turn their prey into slaves and living tools. Some feed on others' humiliation. It comes in different forms, but the essence is always the same. Another being is an object to be used for your own pleasure. Demon sex doesn't differ from any other type of violence. In my former life, it was something I did to others or others did to me. Only one person never received pleasure, not the other. Do you still feel desire? Arushale keeps a long silence as she searches for the right words. Ah, uh, you see, uh, on the other hand, my succubus nature remains with me. I feel the desire. I feel... The, no, the desire <laughs> I feel is the one from my old life. When I look at any mortal, I immediately imagine how... She looks away. But that feeling, that desire, it's not what mortals feel. When you like someone, you don't ponder how good it would feel to drink their soul, do you? Think about how good it would feel to be together. Together, you see. You know how to want someone and at the same time not want to destroy them. For me, it's always one and the same. 
true despair rings in Arushale's voice. I'm not even talking about love, just the common mutual affection of mortals when they're not poisoned with violence. Now I know that I've never felt it. It's hard to imagine how it's even possible. Thank you for being so open. Arushale nods without saying a word. Please tell me about life in the abyss. I can't tell you anything about all the I can't tell you about all of the abyss. I've only seen a small part. If you like, I can tell you about the Midnight Isles and Alushinri Alushinira. Tell me about the Midnight Isles. In the ocean of Ishia, not far from the mouth of the river Styx, there's a chain of islands. This is the realm of Noctikular, the queen of the Succubi. There is no sun there, only a moonlit night alternating with a moonless one. Onocticular, demon lord of assassins, darkness and lust. Lady Nocticular is a beautiful but deadly creature. Even demon lords aren't safe from her deadly seductions. The number of demon lords she seduced and assassinated is formidable. Nocticular's abyssal realm consists of dozens of islands on an immense sea of still black water. The sky is always dark here, with strange stars and a disturbingly large moon in the sky above. Each of these midnight isles represents a demon lord, while the no notable entity she's assassinated. With each new kill, her realm grows. The other demon lords treat Nocticula with a mixture of obsession and fear. Lamashtu's cult has taken notice of Nocticula's rising power and has increased the level of hostility with her worshippers, causing some to believe that Nocticular may be close to becoming the second demon to ascend to divinity. Each of the islands is one of Nocticular's trophies, the remains of a powerful entity that perished at her hands. As you see, you cannot take a step in the abyss without treading on corpses. Tell me about Alushinira. The Porfiri city is Nocticular's capital. There's no city like it in the mortal world. Absalom's a village in comparison. Millions, I don't exaggerate, millions of demons and mortals live there. Uh, some come voluntarily, not only from Gularion, but from other plains as well. Nocticula keeps an open boundary and enjoys having many guests, merchants and travelers in the city. Some arrive in chains. The slave trade is the most thriving business in the city. From afar, the city may seem a merry place. Many of its dwellers do enjoy themselves, until it's their turn to become someone else's toy. It's a city of suffering, or grain, of cheerful, festive torments that everyone in the city inflicts on those around them. What are some places of interest in Alushinira? The heart of the business quarter is the flesh markets, where the slave trade takes place. I grew up in the mansion of Lady Velexia. Her house is always full of guests, doing their best to entertain her. Those whose performance is not to her liking risk remain at her house forever. The main attraction of the Succubi city is, of course, the brothels, the 10,000 delights. I need not tell you what they offer. If you can imagine it, someone is selling it. Not far from there, you can find the Harem of Ardent Dreams, which serves as a sort of city hall. Shamira, Nocticula's right hand and mayor of Alushinira, receives her visitors there. For those who prefer bloodier sport, there are many arenas in the city. The most famous of them is Battle Bliss. Battles run continuously, without breaks and without rules. It doesn't matter what trickery you use to win, it only matters how much fun the crowd is having. And above it all, the towers, the House of Silken Shadows, Nocticula's Palace. Hundreds, thousands of towers and domes adorned with jewels. They are legends of what happens inside. Many have striven to experience the delights of the Succubi's Queen's Palace, forgetting that it was built for her pleasure, not theirs. What can you tell me about Nocticula? She's called the Lady in Shadow. They say she was the first Succubus. She's far from the most powerful of the Demon Lords, but this hasn't kept her from being the ruin of many creatures significantly more powerful than herself, even building her kingdom upon their bones. They say that, like Lamash too, she thrives to turn herself from a demon lord into a true goddess. She enjoys killing, but her favorite tools are seduction and deception. She only stoops to crude violence when there are no other games to play. And even then she backstabs from the shadows. Her favorite weapon is a crossbow, though a silk garrote would suit her better. 
If you ever meet her, do not believe a word she says, and do not fall for her provocations. Do not try to beat her at her own game. And most importantly, remember, the worst mistake anyone can make is to underestimate her. Thank you. What do you think of the powers I gave you? It's a great temptation. I don't know if I should be trusted with such power. I certainly wouldn't trust myself with it. When you have so much power, it's easy to decide you're a god, and the mortals are your choice. And perhaps I should wait until after we defeat the forces of the Abyss. Hmm. But that's precisely what these powers are for. She thinks for a moment, then speaks softly. You take a great risk. I'm not sure I can handle the temptation. It's hard enough as it is. I have to go. I will be watching you. <laughs> okay. Arsino. Nothing new, okay. Um, next episode. You know what, let's quickly check on Sealer and Captain Hammertown, and next episode we're going to talk to Wendua. We still have her. I didn't forget about her.